good times and bad You are on your throne You are God alone You are God alone From before time began You are on your throne you are God alone And right now In good times and bad You are on your throne You are God alone Tonight we come to bless your name Eternal walk of ages master our lord and life the deathless prince of Zion the one who was and is and is to come the way maker the miracle worker the water walker the one who turns destinies around the one who declares the things from before they happen and they come to pass we come to honor you this evening. We come to exalt your name because you are God. You are great. You are greatly to be praised. In your house this evening, I join everyone online and on site to lift your name high above every other name. Let every other name fade away Till there's only you Let every other name fade away Jesus, take your place Jesus, take your place Take your place here, Lord glorified in everything we shall say and do to everyone who is online right now watching and those who will watch even after now we ask that your word will produce life I trust you Lord that you will engage everyone by this word draw us to the place of truth and revelation we give you glory for it. in Jesus precious name we pray can you say amen oh glory to God in the highest it's nice to be here this evening and I want to first and foremost thank my spiritual parents Apostle Desmond and Pastor Jumoke Oladimeji for the great opportunity I call it great and it's not a mantra I, it's not you know a cliche no I, I mean it from the depths of my heart that it's indeed a great opportunity to stand on this exalted altar this evening to bring the word of God. I, I tremble as I handle the mic and I tremble as I speak the word of God to everyone this evening. And I believe that your lives will never be the same again. Now, it's not just one of those things we say before messages start. I am saying, if you listen, your life will never be the same again. I can assure you, I can tell you, sir, that you will never be the same again. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Greetings to all um, brothers and sisters online who are listening in, either by MixLR or by um, YouTube. I think Facebook as well. I greet you all. The Lord is your strength as you stay connected. Something from this altar will flow into your lives in Jesus name. Amen. Hallelujah. And so this evening we look at the subject um, title the agency of renewal. The agency of renewal. It's a loaded night. 
And um, what I've come to do is to reiterate the things that have been said on this exalted altar. And I want you to please pay attention. Do you know the scripture says in Joshua 1.8, he said what? This book of the law shall not depart out of thy what? Mouth. But you shall what? Meditate therein day and night. Okay, take note. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. It's an instruction to not do something, correct? That's an instruction to not do something, right? Praise God. It's an instruction to not do something. Don't let the book of the law depart out of thy mouth. So, while it is an instruction, it's an instruction carrying the negative sense. Like, don't let this happen. Hallelujah. But let this happen rather than this. So, the first probability or scenario is for the word of God, the law, the book of the law, to depart out of your mouth. It's the probability if you allow it. But God is saying, don't let it happen. But rather than just receiving the instruction of not letting this happen, he then tells you what should happen. So what should happen is now the antidotes to not allowing this to happen. So if the book of the law will not depart out of your mouth, the only way it will not happen is when you what? Meditate therein day and night. Are you following that? Let's go back to that first part, the negative. It's an instruction. He says the book of the law must not depart out of where? Talk to me. Out of where? So it should, it means if you want to turn it to the positive instruction, it should be the book of the law must always be in your mouth. How will you allow the book of the law to be in your mouth? By mouthing it day and night. Oh, you get that. So the, the, when you use the word, but thou shalt meditate, it is actually you will mouth it. Because if it must not depart from your mouth, it means it must be in your mouth. So in essence, the word meditate, if you check the definition at some point, you will arrive at mouthing. You have to now learn to mouth the things that you have seen in the book of the law. And how often should you mouth it? Day and night. My question is, who mouthed it this morning? I mean, how many have mouthed? Is your, do you have a mouthful of the word of God? Then he went further to say, yes, mouth it day and night. Meditate on it day and night. Then he didn't just say meditate. He said, that you may what? Look at it. Observe. Oh, God. So, beloved, the word of God is not for lazy people. It's not for dummies. In fact, God invites dummies to come to the word to learn wisdom. He said, those who are simple, dummies. He said, come and learn wisdom of the word of God. He says, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. It means if the word was not there, it was darkness. He said again, the entrance of his word brings what? Talk to me. It brings light. And then what? It does not just bring light. It also does what? It brings understanding to the dummy. The word simple there means dummy. Anyone who is dummy, come. There's something even for the dummies in the word. The word may meet you as a dummy, but will never leave you as a dummy. Help me say amen to that. And so, like I said earlier, what I'm coming to do here is to teach us to observe, to do the things that had been said in this house. And I pray in the name of Jesus that our lives will never be the same again. I said our lives will never be the same again. I'll tell a story quickly before we move on. Done nine minutes already. Hallelujah. 
So I met a man of God belonging to me, the man of God, for a while. And by, by a while, I mean for over six years, you know. But I like a situation where God arranges the meeting than for me to get crashed, to bump into people, you know, to just be, you know, all of those things. So by God's divine providence, we met. And I shared a few things with him about some of the struggles I've had, some of the worries, and some of my experience in ministry and all of that. Then when he listened to all I had to say within maybe 25 minutes of my, because he asked questions. At the end of everything, he then began to speak. And I want to speak to you from what he said. He said, first and foremost, Pastor Emmanuel, you need to understand who you are, one. And I want you to please listen, man. Listen. He said, you need to understand who you are, one. And what you are called to do, too. He said, if you do not know who you are, you won't know what is expected of you. You won't even know what you are called to do. He said, so let me tell you who you are if you don't know. You are a Christian. You are a believer. Listen, you are a child of God. You are a member of the kingdom of life. He said, if you agree that you are a believer, a child of God, a member of the kingdom of life, he said, then we will now start talking. Do you agree? I said, yes, sir. That you are a Christian? Yes, sir. That you are a child of God? Yes, sir. That you are a member of the kingdom of life? I said, yes, sir. He said, can we now talk? I said, yes. He said, every believer who has been called into the ministry of Jesus Christ, and by ministry, he's not talking of just holding the mic. Whatever ministry, whatever service that God has called you to occupy in the house of the Lord, in the kingdom, in various units or department or local assembly you belong, every one of you is not called. Listen to what he said. He said, none of us is called to do something new. He said, we are only called to replicate what instructions we have received. He said, the problem with most of the new generation Christian is that they try to do something new. As if that is how to please God. Not knowing that, how to please God is to receive his instructions and stay thereby. Now hear this. He now quoted a scripture. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 15. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes 10 15. The labor of the world. He said when labor begins to weary. Wisdom is missing. When labor begins to weary you. Then wisdom is missing. And what is the wisdom missing? It is found in Proverbs 4.13. The Bible says, and I want you to please listen. In Proverbs 4.13, the Bible says, Take fast hold of instructions. Do not let her go. Keep her, for she is thy life. Oh. Hey. Let's go back again. He said, take fast hold. The word fast hold means grab your copy of the instruction given. It means instruction is your life. If you are drowning in water and suddenly you hear an instruction from nowhere you just hear someone say, stretch your hand. Like you know you are drowning. Life is about to leave your body. And you hear, stretch your hand. Maybe they've thrown a rope or something. But you are closing your eye about to die, about to drown and die. And you suddenly hear, Stretch your hand. Just wave your... Hello? What would matter at that time is what? Is to stretch your hand. Why? Because that instruction will save your life. I'm saying to us tonight, beloved, that we need to revisit the instructions that we should have to be able to bring pleasure to the Lord. Hallelujah. 
the labor of the fools. Weary is every one of them because they do not know how. You see the word now. He does not know how to get to the city. Now listen very well. For every what, there is a how. For every task, there is a tool. Did you get that? For every what, there is a what? How. For every task, there is a tool. I can be frustrated in a task if I don't have what it takes to accomplish it. Hallelujah. Those who are very proficient with the use of the computer, they know that it is tools that make computer useful. It's not just the fact that you can press control C, control B. No, it's the tool. Hallelujah. Can I go on? If there's any new, any new, maybe, maybe program, it's the tool that you need to first get familiar with and learn how it is being used. So tools are important. Glory to God. I desire for us to have a renewal experience in our lives, beloveds. I desire for us to have a renewal experience in our families and our ministries, in this house, in our service to God and humanity and every area of life. That's my desire. But guess what? There are agencies that make for this renewal to be possible. While I desire it, you now need to know the agency that carry this renewal. If you comprehend, listen very well, and you collaborate with these agencies that we're going to mention tonight, you will never experience redundant again. I tell you. You will begin to see everything that had looked old and boring come alive again. Because the plan of God is not for you to just experience the old and get bored experiencing the old because you are serving the Lord. No. Many people believe that serving God is boring. Following the Lord is dumb, is dull. Someone asked me many years ago, how do you unwind? I said, I unwind every day. Hallelujah. He said, how? I said, we unwind in the Holy Ghost. He said, yes, but I mean on Friday nights, for example, I said, my Friday night is every night. Hallelujah. I don't have any special night where I just go to relax. No. Because in serving the Lord, beloved, there is sweetness. Somebody say amen. amen. Can we go on? Are you getting it? Hallelujah. Nothing, I pray for you, nothing will remain old in your life after tonight in the name of Jesus. Amen. Isaiah 55 verse 11 says, So shall my word be. That goeth forth out of my mouth, it shall not return to me void. Sir, ma, there is a burden where we have plenty words that have what? Looked void like they will never happen. If you understand the agencies we're going to be sharing with you tonight, there will be nothing called void in the words you hear from the Lord again. Let me hear an amen to that. You know, he says it will not return to him void. He says, but it shall accomplish what I please. And it shall prosper in the things that I sent it to. That's the word. That's what the word of God can do. And I declare tonight that as this agency begins to reach out to you, you will begin to see mighty accomplishing of God's very words in your life in Jesus' name. Psalm 104 and verse 30. Psalm 104 verse 30 says, You sent forth your spirit. They are created. And you renew the face of the earth. Psalm 104 verse 30. So anytime God wants to create, what does he do? He sends forth his spirit. It is the spirit of God that is the agency of creation. If you want anything in your life to be created or to be recreated, to come anew or to be renewed, you need to know the way of the Spirit and how the Holy Ghost is responsible for renewing and recreating. Listen, 
Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. The Bible says in the beginning, God created the heaven and the what? Talk to me. And the earth. And the earth was without form and void. My word shall not return to me void. Remember that. He said, but it shall accomplish. So you see that even though the earth was without form and the earth was void and darkness was upon the face of the deep, the spirit therefore began to move upon the surface of the water. And then a renewal took place. Over your minds, your soul, your life, your consciousness, there will be the release of the Holy Ghost. There will be the release of the wind of the Spirit. The very Spirit of God will blow fresh air over your soul, over your mind. Redundancy will be done away with. Boredom will be cast out. Something fresh will come into your spirit man. Your consciousness with God will heighten. Your prayer life will come up with fire in the name of Jesus. For everyone getting ready for renewal, you need to be prepared to walk afresh with the Holy Ghost. You think you've known him, but sir, get ready. There are dimensions and there are depths. Glory to God. What you've known is only what you've known. There are deeper things with the Holy Ghost. Tell yourself, I'll be ready, I'll be ready, I'll be ready, I'll be ready. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Listen, what is renewal? Because we say the agency of what? Renewal. What is renewal? Renewal, listen, is the process of restoring. One, revitalizing. Two, or making something new. Renewal is restoring, revitalizing, or making something new. Hallelujah. That's what renewal is. Now, think about restoring a fervent prayer life. Or restoring a more fervent prayer life. Think about it that way. Think about a restoration of the gifts of the spirit that had gone fossilized. Think about it. Think about the gift of healing, the working of miracles, signs and wonders. Think about the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, discerning of spirits. Hallelujah. By the way, discernment is different from discerning of spirits. I'm sure you know that. Discernment is, for, is that which is accruable to your spirit man. Your spirit man needs the ability to discern when the spirit man is developed. Hallelujah. The lowest form of discernment is assumption. And that's why many people run into error. The error of assuming what they do not know about. Discernment is for your spirit man. Is when the spirit man or the spirit of a man or a, of a person is active and alive. You'll be able to know. You'll be able to judge, judge. rather. You'll be able to separate. For example, I usually think, or I used to think, not usually, I used to think that Solomon asked God for wisdom. But I found out that no, he did not. Who used to think like that? I read my Bible again. He didn't ask for wisdom. First Kings 3. Hallelujah. The Bible says, Solomon, after he gave a thousand burnt offering, God appeared to him in Gibeon and said, what do you want? Ask me. Solomon said, give me the spirit of understanding so that I can discern between what is good and what is bad. For who is he that can judge this, your people? That was his prayer. Wait, I was now looking back. Where is the wisdom? I was now reading my own wisdom. I didn't see wisdom then. He asked for understanding to what? To discern. Now, that, that discerning requires understanding. Praise the name of the Lord. And the, God replied. He said, okay. I've seen all mankind all over the world and from one generation to the other. And they have one uniform prayer point. One is they usually ask me to... Give them long life. Or to give them the neck of their enemy. But what you've asked me is different. So I'm going to give you what you ask with wisdom. 
So it was the addition that God gave. The addition to understanding was what? He said, I have given you understanding and a wise heart. So it was God that added wisdom to it. He requested for understanding. Praise the name of the Lord. So discerning is important. And many have fallen low, far below what is required for a heart to discern correctly. And it's different from discerning of spirit. That's a gift of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. So when you are renewed, imagine that you are renewed in your mind and in your spirit. And your discerning is sharp. You will know who not to do business with. You will know when not to enter a vehicle. Oh God, are you following? Are you following me? A Christian who has heightened discerning spirit, not discerning of spirit. I'll come to that later. Whose spirit can discern well, they will know when to enter a bus. You will never be a victim of, they say, one chance. One what? Glory to God. Something happened recently, amen. <laughs> um, <laughs> it was funny that I was, I was editing a book on my phone. And I was on a journey. So I was engaged with the book because I needed to cover very, you know, very voluminous book within a short time. So I was editing, editing one chapter to the other. And I was going on a journey. So I got to a place and they said, this is the bus. And I jumped in. Jumped in the bus and I was using the phone. Suddenly I noticed that at the same time, five people came on board onto that same bus. At the same time. And I was the last. You know what I mean by the last. So two people, you know those small mini buses. Two people beside me here. And then three people here. Somebody was already in front when I came. They just joined. At the same time. Then I became conscious. I want no kilo and be Like, what did they happen? You know, as I, was, as I was thinking, in my mind I'm saying, Lord, did you tell me not to enter this bus? I was trying to check. That in the last few moments, were you giving me a signal that I didn't get? I was, my mind was like this, Lord. And suddenly, the driver moved, boom. Holy Ghost, did you speak and I didn't hear? Because I know when you tell me things, I, he has told me many times, not this one. I, by the mercy of the Lord, not this one. Not that one. Not this one. Not this one. Sometimes he will say, slow down. Move. I know. But this day I was worried. Did he tell me anything before then I didn't know? Suddenly, the guy beside me, he began to make one very funny call. Like fake call. It was, the fakery was too, was too real. Suddenly, the one in front of me, the last in front of me, began to make another funny call. Then, the last one to the other side too was making call. They were now all calling at the same time, making it look real. But I saw the fakery in the whole thing. Huh? Holy Ghost, I've never entered one chance before. But today, not today. <laughs> I told myself, today, not today. Because I do printing jobs, I have some things in my bag, you know, for printing to become to be easy. One of it is a slit knife. We use it to cut foam board. So somehow, I forgot it in my bag, and anytime I check the bag, I see it there. My mind now went there. So I began to check, which side is jugular vein? <laughs> oh my God. I mean, I began to ask myself, this guy that is here, does he have a, is his jugular vein to my side or to his side? I'm looking for, because at that time, I don't sign. Then I sat up, I now, I curved my body. Then I checked the knife, it was there. Then I checked the glass, I said, okay, I can break this one, raise alarm outside, but two people will go down. There's an energy I have because I don't fight. Growing up, I never fought. So that non-fighting thing is there. So I want to use all the energy today. All the anointing of Samson, I began to request. <laughs> I began, I was ready. I checked. So when they noticed how I was poised, I was ready. In fact, I did my body in such a way that I gave him a signal that this guy, then my hand was in the bag. I was ready for them to say, Hey, they, they, they won't say another one again. I was ready to say it this way. Guy, if you let me go, you continue your business. You will do your one chance freely and successfully until God catches you. But if you try nonsense today, 
I was ready. I was calculating. How do I beat them? Oh, because in my head, you know why? Two things. I hate the stories I hear of people who do that one chance thing. I hate it. There was a man of God that I know. He's, he's still recovering now. I mean, they held him, beat him. I even calculated, Lord, if there is anything called pistol or any arm with them, it will not shoot. I will not fear it. I told myself, don't let it shoot. That's the only thing we will do. But I will let them not. I was, I was just a lot of thoughts in my head. But as we went halfway in the journey, one of them brought out a sachet of Chelsea. I said, ah, today, not today. It looks like before they do their operation, they always open Chelsea so that they will become... When I saw the Chelsea, then I began to take my own Chelsea. I began to speak. In, that's my Chelsea. Hallelujah. My own is not even in sachet. My own is in drums. Hallelujah. So we will beat by the anointing today. <laughs> Hallelujah. We got to the last bus stop. All of them at the same time left and went the same way. I said, Lord, this could just be your salvation. You just saved me. This is salvation. The same thing many would have entered and they would be telling the story. That man of God I was referring to, they did all kinds of things to him. At the end of the day, they used his, they drove him to an ATM. We drew all the money he had, not much. Then robbed someone else on that spot. And then told the person to transfer his money into that guy's account. You know all manners of annoying things. Then by the time they were done, they put, you know this hot rub. They call it abonic in this very hot balm. They opened his two eyes and inserted a chunk into his two eyes. Then they covered it and tied his neck and pushed him off the vehicle. He called me four days ago or thereabouts. I said, I'm still recovering. Still that my eye. I'm about three months ago now. He said, still my eye. The eye is still not looking clearly. So when I hear those stories, I say, Lord, may my discerning not be weak. Everybody say that to yourself. Lord, my discerning will not be weak. Because the world is wicked. They don't care about your God. They want to just make sure they mesmerize you and fulfill their loss over your life. But in the name of Jesus, your discerning will pick them. Before they come close to you, you will pick them. You're not saying that amen well. Some of you, maybe because, um, um, may you not see. But I pray that your discerning will be alive. The Lord will guide and guard you in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. See, renewal involves bringing back a thing to a state of freshness. I mean, you're singing song and your worship life has just been renewed. And you just sing a simple song. Ba, 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 ba. And it looks like you're singing one million melodious sound. And it's a simple song. That's renewal. Glory to God. I put it this way. It's a state, it involves bringing back a thing to a state of freshness, vigor, or effectiveness. Now, think about this quickly. Think about renewal in your marriage. Think about the Holy Ghost putting new wine in your marriage. Think about renewal in your ministry. Renewal in your Bible study life. Hallelujah. Renewal in your word level. Because some people study Bible, but their word level is still the same. Oh, you don't know that? You don't know that studying the Bible is the first exercise. When you successfully do your Bible study under accurate teacher, what happens is that you now begin to know the scripture. So Bible study leads you into knowing the what? I, but I didn't say scriptures. I said scripture. You begin to intermeddle with the scripture. Hallelujah. It is when you begin to understand the scripture that the word of God begins to come into your spirit man. Oh, hallelujah. So, Bible study, scripture, and then the word of God. Re think about renewal in these areas. 
Think about your faith level growing and deepening. Think about it. Think about your revelation life. Think about your service life. Think about your health. Think about renewed health. Have you felt renewed in your health in recent times? Or is it the same fatigue night and day, January to December? You need the power of God to renew your health. Have you, think, have you thought about renewal in your business? In your mind? Have you thought about renewal in your Christian walk? In your finances? In your children's life, your spouse's life, and in the life of your family members and siblings? Lack of renewal is the reason we have low participation in the things of God. Let me say that again. Lack of renewal is the reason we have what? Low participation in the things of God. Especially by the people of God who have known God. Low renewal is why there is, or lack of renewal is why there is low obedience. Lack of renewal is why there is low energy in performance of the things that God tells us to do. Lack of renewal is why there is low zeal. Zeal in your prayer life. Zest in your Christian life. Low productivity. Low profit. Even in your venture. Hallelujah. You want to cut corners. You want to, they will say, you know, business. You can't do business without sin. Because if you see business, at the heart of the word business, there is S-I-N, sin. You know, they just bring all manner of things together. All to prove the fact that, you know, if you don't cut corners, you can't do exploits. It's not always so. Hallelujah. Low cooperation. Even in your marital experience. Everything around you is boring and dry. They drag you to come early to church. You're dragged to do the things of God. No task is in your hand and you are doing successfully. Why? Because renewal is lacking. Our attitude is often very, very critical or negative when there's no renewal. Our responses to things and people are often sour because there's no renewal. All these are signs that we need renewal. Hallelujah. I'm praying to God tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Renewal will visit everyone here today. Hallelujah. Isaiah 32 verse 15 says, Until the Spirit be poured upon us from on high, and our wilderness become a fruitful field, and the fruitful field be counted for a wilderness. Our, uh, for a forest, I meant to say. Wilderness becomes fruitful field. Fruitful field be counted for a forest when the Spirit be poured upon us from on high. Let the Spirit of renewal be poured upon everyone tonight. Amen. Everyone, let the Spirit of renewal come upon your life. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I told us earlier about Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 and 2. In the beginning... God created the heaven and the earth. The earth was without form and void. Darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of God began to hover, move upon the surface of the water. And God said, let there be renewal. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Amen. So don't forget the principle tonight. The agency for renewal is what, beloved? The spirit of God. Somebody say the spirit of God. Say it again. Say the spirit of God. He is the agency of renewal. Outside him, everything is rusty. Everything is dry. Everything is drab. Everything is on this in, it's just disinteresting without the spirit. Guys, we need to focus on the spirit of God tonight. Can we go on? Hallelujah. Hmm. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 12 verse 23. We need to see something interesting there in Hebrews 12 23. Hallelujah. From 22, he says, You are come unto Mount Zion, the city of the living God, before the innumerable company of the angels, before the spirit of just men made perfect. That's 23. Before the spirit of just men made perfect. If you see verse 22, he said, You are come unto Zion. Zion in the New Testament is the house of God. Praise the name of the Lord. So in Zion, there is a description of the citizenries of Zion. We, we need to see it quickly. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 22. Glory to God. He says, but you are come unto Mount Zion, unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, 
and to an innumerable company of angels. You see the things that power and people Zion. Zion is not just an arid land. It's filled with all... See, they may be invisible, but they are there. Glory to God. Where you have come to here called Zion is the city of the living God. I said it's the city of the living God. I thought you would say hallelujah to that. Hallelujah. I said it's the city of the living God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Some people will tell us, uh, you've heard all of those beautiful nonsense. They will say things like, um, Africa is building too many churches. Let them close down the churches and use it to build factories. Mumu is worrying you. And it's actually the highest level of Mumu. The reason is because I would have forgiven you if you are not a partaker of these things we talk about in Zion. If you were from outside Zion and you are saying this, I would say, I forgive you because you don't know. You that have drunk of the spirit of life, having been saved by eternal spirit of grace, now saying that churches should be closed down, they should zip your mouth. I mean, God should plaster that mouth. Because you do not know what Zion is. That's why you mess around with Zion, which will close down the house of God. Why don't you tell the banks to close down the banks that there are too many banks around? Why must it be the church? So is the proliferation of churches stopping factories from being... No, no. Ask, answer, please. So because we have many churches now, they are disturbing factories from being built. I mean, there's no bush again to open up for factories to be built. See, Zion is not a place we can replace in the earth. We cannot. You know why? Because Zion is the last resort of the oppression of God on the earth. It is for Zion's sake the earth is preserved. Oh God. Are you here tonight? It is for Zion's sake that the earth is what? Preserved. Go and find out what is happening in Antarctica, in Iceland, in all those eastern nations. You will hear all manners of things that you're wondering. Why is it not happening this end? It could happen, but for Zion. We thank God for the prayer of the people of God. We will keep praying. And more people will pray. The nations will come and surrender to the Lord. We will not stop factories from being built. But you can't replace the house of God with factories. Somebody say amen to that. He says, we have come to Mount Zion, the city of God, unto them, unto an innumerable company of angels. 23 says, to the general assembly. And what? Are you looking at it? Are you looking at it? Please look at it, everyone. To the general assembly of what? Of the firstborn. Looks like nobody's reading their Bible tonight. Let me see your Bibles. Hallelujah. I'm not running speech. If it was a speech now, my president talking, of course, I have my notes here. But we are studying together. What did we call it? Bible. Come on. It's not speech saying. If it's speech, I would have finished since. Well, you need to see it. It's the book of Hebrews chapter 12. Blessed are your eyes because they read these things. Hebrews 12. I'm reading 23 right now. 23 says, to the general assembly and church of what? Of the firstborn, which are written where? In heaven. And to the judge of what? Of all. And to the spirit of what? Just men made perfect. So in Zion, there is what is called the spirit of the just men made perfect. Not the spirit of perfect men made just. What I'm saying is that Zion is actually peopled by both leaders and followers. The leaders are the people that are custodians of the wisdom, the word, the dimension, and the callings of God. Our pastor, for example, who is the head over this house, hallelujah, he is one of the spirit of just men made perfect. Many of you are thinking the spirit is talking of dead people. No! Do you not know that in the body of Christ, in Christ, people don't die. They sleep. Hallelujah. No, they sleep. Glory to God. They don't die. He said, do not mourn as though who don't have hope. Anyone who dies sleeps in Christ. But guess what? If the spirit of the man whom God used in 1930 is still being used in prayer and singing today, it means men don't die in Zion. Men of Zion don't die. They transit, but the operation of their spirit is still at work. 
You will hear them say the God of Ayobabalola. Why do they say that? Because the oppression of God in that man's life has not left the earth. And we covet it in prayer most times. Glory to God. Can I say this to you? Your name too can be mentioned. Hallelujah. If you follow suit with God's instruction. Glory to God in the highest. I'm saying this to let us know that. Yes, we talked about the agency of God. Which is the spirit of God in renewal. But you must understand that it is not only the spirit of God that operates in Zion. The spirit of just men made perfect are also part and parcel of the embroidery. The embroidery is not complete if it's just Holy Ghost and man. No, a, an agent must be there. So in the church of God, there is headship and there is leadership and there's followership. Headship is Christ. Leadership are the leaders, men and women who subscribe and yield to Christ and receive of the spirit of Christ to release in the house of God. Hallelujah. If anybody says that nobody preached to me, I just knelt down in, in my room, call him and ask him a bit more question. You mean you didn't hear any message? I mean nobody told you anything. You just woke up. No, don't tell us a lie. Somebody preached the word. The Bible says, how can they believe? If nobody preached, somebody must have preached. It might not be at the moment they preached that you responded. But a man, a vessel was responsible. Glory to God. So I'm saying, as we have the spirit of the almighty God that does the activity of renewal in the body of Christ, we also have the spirit of just man made perfect. Somebody say amen. amen. Are you following tonight? Can we go on? Hallelujah. Oh God. Looks like you're not ready. Can we go on tonight? Yeah. Romans 8 verse 6 says, To be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and what? And peace. You need to know that if you don't. Somebody say with me. To be carnally minded is death. And to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So you realize that to be spiritually minded minded. There is such thing called spiritually what? That means your mind minds the things of the spirit. And in this case, the things of the spirit include the work of the Holy Ghost, and hallelujah, which is the spirit of God, and the operation of the spirit of the man. Glory to God. The Bible says, what man knows the things of God? Except by the spirit of God. First John chapter, first Corinthians 2. He says, likewise. You, so I can't know the things of you, sir, until I meet your spirit. Until I meet your spirit. So the Holy Ghost teaches us the things of God. If you want to know the things of God, by the Holy Ghost. If you want to know the things of man, by the same Holy Ghost. Glory to God. So my point with all this tonight, if we want to piece it together, is that as you understand the agency of renewal by the Holy Ghost, you must understand the agency of renewal in the spirit of the man who is the leader, the head of the assignment. Can I say this to you? When you hear the word spirit, again, you need to understand, sometimes you can interchangeably say heart. Somebody say heart. So if you want to know his spirit, f f follow me please. That means if you want to know his heart, spirit, heart, heart, spirit, you can interchange it. So if you know the heart or the spirit of the man, then you will be able to interpret his words. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I hope I'm not confusing you tonight. Oh, I said I hope you're not, I'm not confusing you tonight. There are things that only the spirit can achieve. Not in the flesh. Only the spirit. There are things you can never understand about Apostle Desmond until you meet his spirit. If you don't meet his spirit, you can't understand them. Interestingly, if you hear them and you try to interpret them with your spirit, you will be wrong. And there are many who have always produced the wrong result around him. Not because of the fact that he is a wrong person. It's that you have not learned this principle of understanding his spirit. Glory to God. I hope you are getting it. I hope you are getting it. James chapter 2 verse 26. The Bible says, as the body without the spirit is dead, 
So faith without work is also what? Dead. Body without the spirit. So it means as the body of Apostle Desmond is, without understanding the spirit, so your faith in his word will produce death. You didn't get that. Let me say that again. You see his body, but you have not labored to meet him and understand his spirit. By spirit, you can interchange with heart, however you want to see it. If you cannot meet him in the spirit, and you only meet him in the body, the production is death. By death, I mean no result. It's a principle. You can't change it. That's how it is in the realm of the spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can I go on? Hallelujah. We, we need to hear this. The spirit of God is the life-giving agency of God. Are you there? Likewise, the spirit of the man, the spirit of the man here, is the only way that you can access the life of God in this place. Let me explain. You cannot truly understand what God is saying to the man of God until you hear his heart and understand his heart. If you claim God is talking to you and you do not align what God is saying to you with what God is saying from here, it will be producing counter results. Now, we need maybe a long session because there are scriptures to back this up. But I hope the Holy Ghost will enlighten you as we make this progression tonight. Look at this. Proverbs 18 verse 14. The spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity. But a wounded spirit, who can bear? There are many people who you think they will die because they sustain injury. But they refuse to die because their spirit is what? Strong. So it means it is the spirit of man that sustains his body. His body that didn't die was because his spirit was strong. So, I'm, I'm trying to prove to you tonight that the spirit of the just man in this place, made perfect. If you don't meet that spirit, you, you should leave. Go and find the one whose spirit you can connect with. Because the result will not be what? It will not tally. It will not show that you are truly receiving. He will be laboring. You are not getting it. He will be struggling. You are not receiving. He will rebuke you. You will misread it. When Jesus told Satan, get, told Satan, get behind me, it was Peter standing before him. And Peter did not take offense. Hallelujah. Oh, you're not getting that. Peter didn't take offense, even though he was talking against Satan. But it was right before Peter, because Peter met his spirit. How did I know? Who do men say that I, the son of man, am? Peter then said in that story, thou art the Christ. Remember, the son of the living God. Look at the response of Jesus. He was excited. There is an excitement to the servant of God when he sees that you understand his spirit. He says, Simon, bad Jonah, flesh and blood have not revealed this to you, but my father who is in heaven. Because you have the privy of this revelation, I give you the keys of the kingdom. Whatever you bind on earth, you remember, shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you lose on earth, upon this rocky knowledge will I build my church. Because you, 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 can, you, you have met me in the spirit. May your eyes be open. Amen. May your understanding be clear in the name of Jesus Christ. Can we go on? Hallelujah. As I get ready to round off. See, the spirit of God is the agency that gives us revelation. Don't forget that it is the spirit of God that makes us know the things of God. It is the spirit of man that makes us know the things that is in the man. Now, the spirit of the just man made perfect. Who is the leader in this place? Are you following that? If you meet that spirit, you will be able to understand what we call the revelation knowledge that he speaks and shares in this place. 
There are times when he preaches that he will preach and shout. You, you know, when he does that, some just sit down and nothing happens. Nothing happens. Nothing is resonating in your spirit. Nothing makes you... There are times I've, I've, I've heard some men have met their spirit. And when I hear them talk, hallelujah, are you ready for this? When I hear them talk, I will talk rather, I will give a scream. You'll be wondering what's wrong with him. No, 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 you don't get. Something just got transferred from him to me. But for that transfer to take place, there must be a gaze. Just like Moses said, those who have been beaten by the serpent. He said, look upon the brazen serpent and then your poison will leave. It was a gaze. There is such gaze that can produce the exchange of power where your attention is released so that his passion can be received. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Let me jump. Glory to God. How can you walk in this revelation of the agency of renewal by the spirit of the just man made perfect? Shortcut. Are you ready? Are you ready for this? Somebody say impartation. I'm rounding off right now. Hallelujah. Somebody say impartation. Oh God, you're not following me. Somebody say impartation. Impartation is the way. And when I mean impartation, I'm telling you that. Hmm. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, give me wisdom to say this. I dare tell you tonight that you have not been truly imparted if you are not duplicating his results. If what he does, hallelujah, is not being replicated in your life, no impartation here. The proof of impartation is duplication. And in the kingdom, the principle is this. It comes as seed. It's received as harvest. So, and Jesus said it this way. Verily I say unto you, who be, whoever believes in me, the works I do, he shall do. Whoever believes in me. Come on. So, whoever believes in me, the works I do, shall he do. And greater works. And gre so, the, the proof of impartation is duplication. And then multiplication. You now take it further beyond where he has stopped. Beloved, I need to share with you tonight quickly in, um, in quick succession. How can you walk in full impartation? Somebody say full impartation. Ah, yeah. If you understand this thing, 2024 will be like you'll be gliding. It will be as if this is a new church to you. I'm serious. It will be as if your pastor is just a new pastor. Because when your revelation knowledge opens regarding knowing and meeting his spirit, many things that you're struggling with, you will not struggle with. Because as it works in his life, it will work in your life. As it produces in his life, it will produce in your life. Hallelujah. Number one, I call it here. Ask for it. Zechariah 10 verse, 10 verse 1. Ask for it. If you can ask, you will get they put me in his office just a while ago. And as I sat there, I said, Lord, Shanahasia. I began to ask. I know what I asked for. This is the office of your servant. Lord, this I receive. I began to ask. When you ask, impartation comes. Number two. Have you written Zechariah 10 verse 1? Number two, in 2 Kings chapter 2 verse 9, Elisha said, Elijah said, what do you want? He said that I may get a double portion of your spirit. You see that? Your spirit, your spirit, your spirit, double portion of your spirit. Hallelujah. I hope somebody got that. Hallelujah. That's number two. That's number one, rather. Number two, engage their word. Engage their word. See, if you engage my word, what happens is that you are exposed to my world. Mm. If you engage my word, you are exposed to my world. Engage Pastor Desmond's words. Don't, don't suffer from what I call doctrinal obesity. Come on. Engage his words. I want to say this. And I received it one and a half or there about years ago. The Lord said, I want you to begin to listen intensively. Not extensively. 
Many listen, touch and go, touch and go. No. He said, listen intensively. And I can tell you, on Pastor's channel, the, the um, what's it called? The Telegram channel. Maybe what we just dropped this evening. I have been eating it. I engage his word. Everything I'm sharing with you are things I picked from different aspects of the things he has taught in the past. And I creatively put them together. Hear this. Number three. Are you ready? Some people only have two, two of pastor's sermons. One. Some don't even have at all. Meanwhile, without any, you have Joshua Selman 1250. You have, meanwhile, the apostle God sent directly to you, you have one or two. If you don't engage his word, you can't meet his world. I'm sorry. I don't have anything against the man of God. I love those men too. But as you grow older and you want to produce true results, ah, you need to be careful to listen intensively. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Ezekiel 2 verse 2. The word of God entered into me. The spirit of God entered into me and just set me on my feet. Ezekiel 2 verse 2. Glory to God. Number three. Accept their correction. I'm rushing. My time is up. Accept their what? Correction. Accept their correction. When they bring you correction, don't frown. Receive it. Glory to God. Proverbs 123. Write it down. Psalm 141 verse 5. Oh, listen to this. You, if you cannot be corrected, you cannot be anointed. Glory to God. Glory to God. Number four, serve them. Somebody says serve them. Serve them. Joel 2, 29. Second Kings 3, verse 11. Elisha. One of the ways we, we say Elisha received the anointing was that he washed. They poured water into Elijah's hands. Glory to God. Joel 2, 29. Second Kings 3, verse 11. Amen. The last I have here as we rise to our feet is walk in their steps. Glory to God. Second Corinthians 12, 18. Write that down. Study at home. Hallelujah. We're always pressed for time every time we come to the house of God. But we shall try to make do with the time, with things we've, the things we've received and to go over them. Let's rise to our feet. Hallelujah. I have one prayer point and I'll drop the mic. But please pray with all your heart. I want you to tell the Lord. Lord, enable me to engage these words that I have heard today. Some of us have to go back to this message to sit down with it, to begin to truly understand and write down. To begin to truly understand it and put it down. It's not something that you hear once and you understand. To understand the spirit of this message, you need to engage again. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus, give me the grace to engage every word I have heard tonight. Are you praying with me? Are you praying with me? I, I want you to pray. Every word. Every 